of pine forest. The ground is covered with pine needles. There's a large clearing and amongst the trees. Mm -hmm. The needles are everywhere with pine cones and sun coming in. But the trees are tall. The bark is rough. You can walk through the trees with pine needles on the ground between them. It is quiet. It is peaceful. I'm listening for squirrels or birds. Mm -hmm. I don't hear any yet. As you walk through this pine forest, look down at, the, at your feet and tell me if you see any feet. I see moccasins. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tell me more. Well, the, I don't know whether they're shoelaces, but they're they're white. The moccasins are are clasps with 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 white. I'll call them shoestrings. Mm -hmm. But there's decorations on them too, but not much. Just some slight coloring. Tell me more. As you look up this body, what else do you feel that you have on? I think I'm wearing... I'm wearing... Are you male or female there? I'm sure I'm male. Mm -hmm. I think I'm wearing pants as opposed to a loincloth. The pants come, I don't want to call it linen. It isn't linen, but it isn't, I don't think it's, it doesn't feel like it's skin. Mm -hmm. It's beige in color though, it's yellowish, it's lightweight. It's easy to maneuver. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything on the top? Of my head? No, on your shirt. Do you have any oh, shirt? Oh, my shirt. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything on the top? Yes, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a loose-fitting shirt that, that even has sleeves, like covering my shoulders anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think they come much farther down the arm. It's baggy around the shoulders and the chest area, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of loose material. Yes. Um, do you see any adornments on it? Well, there's like, there's like drawstrings or something in the front to allow me to, to tighten the front, kind of like a blouse maybe. Mm -hmm. um, the, the shoulders are kind of, I don't want to call them puffy, but they're, they don't, they don't image my shoulders. There's extra material there. Mm -hmm. So take a look at your features and your head, your hair. What do you look like? I'm dark skinned. I have black hair, black eyes, big nose, uh, dark eyebrows, heavy eyebrows. Mm -hmm. My hair. What does my hair look like? It's not, it's not hanging free. It's, uh, it's like it's braided. It's braided? Mm-hmm. Um, How many braids do you have? Well, it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's not like pigtail braids. It's like wrap around mm -hmm. braids that, 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 form fit my hair, head in the front, mm -hmm. and then go down the back. Mm -hmm. um, and the back, maybe there's several, but in the front, it's, 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 braid, it's, it's braided in the front, but it's all wrapped around my, the top of my head, so it's all directed towards the back. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? 30, mm -hmm. maybe a little younger. 
So let's find out what you're doing there today in that forest. I'm enjoying the forest. Mm -hmm. There's no, but there's nobody with me. Are you carrying anything? Anything in your hands? I may have a staff. Mm -hmm. Focus on it and see what it looks like. It's wooden. Mm -hmm. It has color. I think it's yellow. But there may be some embroidery, not embroidery, some, some yellow, um, it's a yellow staff, but it appears to have red decoration or markings on it. Mm -hmm. And what do you use this staff for? It's, I'm not sure I use it, it's more of a symbol. Okay something that I carry and that I can use it as a walking stick but it's it's more of a, a symbol of I don't know whether it's prominence or whether it's just my job a position mm -hmm. but it designates something about who I am very good so let's find out what it is that you do I'd like for you to fast forward and see where it is that you live and what you do there. Be there now. I see a village of round huts. What are they made of? I think they're made out of bark. Mm -hmm. From a distance, it looks like a lot of dirt and daub, though, too. Um, Where is this village? Is it, in, is it in the forest or is it somewhere else? It is, it is not in the thick of the forest where I was, but it is on... The forest is visible. There are trees, but it's at, it's at the edge of the forest. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? people, other other people like me, mm -hmm. children, running back and forth to an open pit fire, so as women. You, mm -hmm. As you approach this village, what do you feel from the others about you? They're not really noticing me. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, expect me to be there I guess I'm part of the part of the common scenery of the village mm -hmm. some women are nodding their heads at me and I'm nodding and smiling at them I don't see any men I wonder where the men are let's find out let's find out what happens to the men go to the scene that will tell you where they are. Be there now. The men are with horses. Mm -hmm. But they're not in a they're not in a wooded area. They're in a heavy grassy area. What's happening there? They're on the edge of a of a, not a cliff, but a, a high rise that is very overgrown with thick grass. But they're looking down into the field below. They're talking. There, there's several of them. They're looking. They seem concerned. They've gotten together for a reason. There's something down there that concerned them. Let's find out what that is. I'm looking into the, to the valley below. It's thick grass. It's hard to see.
there may be there may be a caravan of some sort down there mm -hmm. a wagon maybe something that looks similar to a Conestoga but it's not mm -hmm. and there's not that many there's four or five Four or and five wagons? Four or five wagons. Mm -hmm. Some of them have the ridge, rounded ridge top to allow them, ribbed top to allow them to be covered, but I only see one covered with a white tarp of some sort. So they're pulled by oxen. Mm -hmm. And they're people. How are you feeling? White people. How are you feeling while you're seeing this? Curious. Mm -hmm. Not scared. Not concerned. But it's something that has not been there before. So what do we do? What's the discussion that you're having? I'm listening to the discussion. I'm not really participating. Mm -hmm. What are they discussing? Who are they? Mm -hmm. What do they want? What are their intentions? Would it be better to ignore them? They haven't seen us. If we don't show ourselves, maybe they'll just keep on going. I think that's what we decide to do. Mm -hmm. Ignore it. We're not a violent people. We're not a fierce people. We're not even very territorial. But we don't want to... We don't want to have those people enter into our lives if we can help it. Let them keep going. Very good. Anything else from that scene that's important? Well, not only the people down there white, but they got kids too. Mm -hmm. I think that might be one of the things that causes us to think that they don't mean any trouble too. I think we feel a sense of relief that it's going to pass and that all will be okay. Very good. So now let's close that scene and let's go to another important scene from that life when something is happening, something that is impacting your life. Be there now. It's night. I'm back in the village. The central fire has turned into a big bonfire. The light is glistening off of faces. The faces are predominantly men now. There are a few women, but predominantly men, and they seem agitated around the fire. They're talking in loud voices. What are they saying? They're thinking it's gotten out of hand. What's happened? More people are coming. We have to do something. They're interfering with our hunting. They're setting up their wagons near the water bases. They're scaring animals. They do not appreciate us. They have seen us. They are scared of us. Maybe it's time that we should show them there's something that they should be afraid of. We can't let this continue. So what decision is made? 
there's disagreement. Don't go looking for a fight. Let it be, they will move on. If we show them we don't mean any harm, they won't do anything. We're not scared, we can protect ourselves. But we don't want the aggravation, we just want it to be the way it was. I'm older now. How old are you now? Probably... It's probably been 10 years, mm -hmm. maybe even 15 years since that first description I made of myself. Mm -hmm. But things are not good. We have to do something and I am inclined to agree with them now. I don't normally voice my opinion. For some reason I'm not, I'm not a decision maker, I'm not the one who they ask, but, but when I do, they do ask my opinion, they take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And I agree this time that something needs to be done. So let's find but it may out. not, mm -hmm. it may not be for our, I mean it may, may be ultimately bad, but what are the alternatives if we continue on this way? Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens. Close the scene and now let's go to the scene when you've made that decision to take action. The action, I see us approaching the encampment men mm -hmm. on their bellies. It's not very well protected. I'm not sure whether they're up torn as to whether or not we should take their livestock, their animals or whether we should physically attack them. The arguments have been both ways. I am in favor of stealing. Make it so that they know it's uncomfortable to be here so they leave on their own. What happens next? One of the people who disagree with me has, I think he's fired an arrow. I think it's an arrow. That's what he's got. He's got arrows. It's a bow and arrow. He's firing at the people. And he's hit one of them. And there's all sort of commotion and they're running around. We're lying low. They don't know what's, where it's coming from. But we are intent on letting them know. We just want them to leave. Other arrows are sure being fired. Other people are being hit. People in the... People in the wagon area are huddled down. The three or four or five men are firing, but they're firing blindly. They don't know what they're firing at. We decide to leave. We've made our point. Maybe they will leave. So we leave. They never see us. They don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. What happens now? The next day they're gone. Mm -hmm. It worked. It worked. They took their animals with them. I don't see any graves there or any indication that anybody died. 
but I'm not sure. There may be one. Mm -hmm. But the people are gone. How does that make everyone feel? Like we accomplished something. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they won't come back. Maybe they'll leave us alone. Maybe we can live in peace. Very good. So let's close that scene now. Let's move forward to the next important scene when something is impacting you. In any life? In that same life. I'm feeling old. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to get around the way I used to. I'm still in the same village. But I'm in a bed or a, I'm on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I may be in one of those wooden huts or bark huts, but it's open in front. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's more of a lean-to that I'm in. Because I'm able to see the village from where I am, but I feel like I'm homebound. Mm -hmm. I still have my staff. Who's with you? I'm being tended to by a younger female member of the tribe, but she's not part of my family. Mm -hmm. Do you have family? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And you say you still have the staff. What does the staff represent to you? Right now it represents comfort. Mm -hmm. It represents what I remember in terms of the way things used to be. I've had it virtually ever since I became an adult. I don't know whether it's I think it was a gift. I didn't make it. Who gifted it to you? Uh, the villagers, fellow villagers. I don't remember why, or I can't. I can't vocalize why. But they were very. They made a presentation of it when they gave it to me, and I felt, I felt touched. Mm -hmm. Has this always been your village? Since I received the staff, it has been. Mm -hmm. Did you belong to a different village before? I think I was a wanderer. Mm -hmm. I didn't belong anywhere. I traveled. I was, the word sage comes to mind, I passed information, important information from village to village that was known only to me, and that would impact their lives. And where did you get this information? from a higher source. Mm -hmm. It did not come from individuals. Mm -hmm. so there were things I knew. This is your gift to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Did, they, did you go by a certain name? Um... I think they called me Krubo, Kobo, mm -hmm. starts with a C and there's a B in it, Krobo, mm -hmm. Krobo. Mm -hmm. Did that mean anything? I think it was a... I think it was a name of affection. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it meant anything in terms of authority, mm -hmm. but it was a fondness name. Very good. So now I'd like for you to close that scene and go to the last day of your life in that lifetime when you're ready to transition out of that body. And tell me what's going on. I'm in the same hut, same lean-to. It's daytime. I'm fading, I'm sick. I have my blanket or coverings I'm on the ground. My staff is still there. I'm peaceful. I'm calm. I have lived a good life. I'm still being tended to by that female member of the village who's very nice. She gives me food and drink when I need it, makes sure I'm comfortable. Very good. So now I'd like for you to take your last breath in that lifetime. Take that breath now and allow yourself to be released from that body. Allow your soul to leave that body behind and tell me what you experience as you transition out of it. I feel the lightness. I feel like I'm ascending upward. Mm -hmm. I have no body or a, a very, if I do, it's very flimsy. It's, a, it's kind of like a gossamer. Mm -hmm. I can see the, my full physical body still on the ground. Mm -hmm. And as you look back at that body, every, every life has a purpose and a lesson. What was the purpose of that lifetime? To pass on knowledge that others needed mm -hmm. that would benefit them. And what did you learn? What lessons did you learn? I appreciated being a part of something something that involved more than just me. It made me feel good to feel like I was helping others. It made me feel good to realize that others recognized that that's what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it was a good life? It was. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's leave that life behind now. Continue on your journey and let's see where your soul goes after that life. Is there someone who meets you? Yes, I'm having a hard time What's visualizing that? them. You don't need to. You just need to feel them, to know them. I I have been met by someone, a male, a large person. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I can see, I can see their head, but it's not in strong resolution. It's sort of, it's not, certainly not a physical body. Mm -hmm. They're dressed in robe or something flowing covering up the rest of their body. Their arms are, are it's kind of like a, a shawl or something over their arms. Their arms aren't covered other than the shawl-like thing that's on their arms, mm -hmm. but the rest of their body 
has this flowing robe on it, so their arms are loose. Mm -hmm. How many do you see? Just one. Just one. So I'd like for you to connect with this soul telepathically and find out who he is. He says that he has been sent to meet me and he would like me to follow him. Mm -hmm. And I agree. And we go. Where do we go? Describe everything you see along the way. I'm not seeing anything. It's mm -hmm. it's it's white light. It's it's white cloud like. Mm -hmm. We come into the mist is clearing somewhat and I see a group of people there's a table it's funny though I don't I don't really see a ground mm -hmm. the table's not on a ground it's just a table mm -hmm. and people standing around the table but they're not standing on anything there's something behind the table too. It, it even looks like a structure, maybe a, a, a building of some sort, but it's not, it's not firm in the ground. It's just sort of standing there loose. Mm -hmm. But the people are predominantly around the table. Are they male or female? They appear to be male and they appear to be waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And my guide is taking me to them. There are other people who are not around the table walking around, but they're not paying attention to what to me or to the table or anything. They're doing their own thing. There are some women among those people who are walking around, but at the table it's all men. Mm -hmm. How many do you see? Let me get closer. Four, mm -hmm. three are standing in front of the table, one is standing behind the table, but I think that's just coincidental as to their, where they're standing. I don't think it has anything to do with position or authority. They're just all waiting for me to arrive. Tell me what happens. They greet me. They're smiling. One of them waves, one of them, one of them even holds out his hand to shake my hand. They're, they're happy to see me. It's like they know me. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who they are. Connect with them. One of them appears to, the person behind the table appears to have known me a long, long, long time. He's happy to see me. The others I know less well. Do they have names? Rupert. Rupert? Rupert. Mm -hmm. This is your friend? The one, but the one behind the table. Mm -hmm. And there's a John in front. There's a person by the name of Alonzo, mm -hmm. and maybe Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And who are they? They're people who have been following my progress. I know that. Because they're talking to me about what I have done. And are they glad that I have returned successfully? And that it's now plan, time to plan again for what happens next. So what's the plan? I'm wondering 
whether or not it is a decision I make or whether it's a decision they make. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. And I'm not sure. I'm also wondering whether or not it has to happen now. Mm -hmm. Or whether I have some time to be able to spend with them. They tell me they won't be too to go soon though. Why is that? What's happening that's important to go? They just feel I am needed. They think I can be of assistance mm -hmm. and wonder if I would mind, which means they're leaving it up to me, but they're requesting me to go. What's the purpose of going? The impression that I have is it's similar to what I did in the past. To give information to people who are desperate for information to help their lives. To be able to assist them to become the people that they are, are designed to be. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I don't mind going. How do you select where and with whom you're going to incarnate with? I'm not sure that decision's mine. They're making that decision. They just wanted to know if I was willing to go. Mm -hmm. And you said yes? I said yes. All right. So let's find out what the next steps are. Well, it's funny. They're, they're pointing in a direction. And they're basically saying, go that way. <laughs> what and direction I, is it? Well, it's, I approach the table from the, as you face the table, I approach the table from the left front. Mm -hmm. And they are pointing me to go in the direction of the right front. <laughs> and they're just saying, go in that direction mm -hmm. and you will see. And I say something along the line, lines of, I'll see him at the end of the journey. Mm -hmm. And I walk back into the midst, mist from which I came. And let's find out where you end up. I'm born. Mm -hmm. I'm in a cradle, plastic, yellow, baby toys, stuff hanging over the cradle, mm -hmm. it's reminiscent of the 40s, maybe the 50s. Mm -hmm. That's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. No judging, just keep going. What happens next? There's a, there's a person, maybe my mother over me, leaning in, cooing and eyeing at me. Mm -hmm. Just in the cradle. I'm aware. Mm -hmm. I see her. I know why I'm there. Why is it that you are there? What's going through your mind? And I'm there to be a member of this family. I mean, I'm there because they wanted me there, and I am there to contribute in some way. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember what your guides have told you while you're there? Right now, I remember some of it. I mean, I remember I'm there for a purpose, mm -hmm. and that I should be enthusiastic and positive about why I am there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I remember any messages. Mm -hmm. But I, I am happy to be there. Mm -hmm. So take a look at your mother's eyes. It's cooing over your crib. See if those eyes are any of the eyes that are in the life of David. 
Wow, let me see. The eyes of the window most, to the soul. Yeah, most of what I've seen of her is her is her torso. Let me focus on her face. By hovering over me, her face has been hard to see. Mm -hmm. She's so close. The eyes, the eyes. You know, the interesting thing about the eyes, Is there anything familiar? Could, could My initial reaction was it, it it looked like it was it was I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to analyze but it I mean it looks it looks like I similar to my father's mother. Mm -hmm. Which I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But it might be Betty. Mm -hmm. You'll recognize the soul. I think that's who it is, but mm -hmm. it's it's strange. Mm -hmm. And now I'm wondering, I'm not sure that she's my mother. How is she? She's... She a relative or a friend? All right, let's find out. Let's leave that scene and let's go to another scene in that same lifetime when that woman is there with you. Be there now. I'm in a A living room. Mm -hmm. There's a rug on the floor. I'm sitting. I'm playing on the rug. I may be one or two. Mm -hmm. She is in the room. I think she's visiting. I don't think she's in my family, but she's she appreciates my being there. She's paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. How do you feel towards her? I like her. Mm -hmm. I feel affection towards her. It's, it's funny, she's the only one in the room. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know who my parents are. I don't know where they are. Let's find out where they are. Allow that knowing to come to you. What happened to your parents? My mother died. And my father My father became absent, or frequently absent. I don't know who's taking care of me, allow but it's not my parents. Mm -hmm. So let's find out. Allow yourself to get older to where you see who's taking care of you. I'm in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. I see lots of other kids. There are, I'll call them matrons and men, mm -hmm. but nothing like parents. How do you feel in that place? Um, I'm glad to have a home. Mm -hmm. I'm glad people are taking care of me. 
I don't feel a whole lot of love. I feel close to some of the other kids there who are in the same position as I. Mm -hmm. What do they call you in that life? What name do they call you go by? I think they call me David. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens next. Close that scene and let's go to another scene where something important is happening in your life. I am... I think I'm graduating high school. Mm -hmm or some sort of school. And I'm old enough to go work, to leave the orphanage and to be able to work outside of the orphanage. Where do you work? It's in town, a shop, a store. What do I do? I may be the clerk in a store. How old are you there? Sixteen, seventeen. Mm -hmm. But the store owners appreciate my dependability. They like what I do. Mm -hmm. And I like working for them. What year is this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, it's in the, I mean, my feel is it's in the early 1900s, but it could be, it could be anywhere from could be anywhere from 19. Trust your first impression. Don't analyze it. Don't use your logical mind. What does it feel? What's the first number that comes into your mind? 1932. Okay, very good. And where are you located? Missouri comes to mind. Very good. So let's find out what's important about this scene. Which scene? Where you are now as a clerk. I'm having a feeling of belonging. Mm -hmm. I'm having a feeling of accomplishment, of being useful of not having to be taken care of. I can control my own destiny now. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out what happens in your life. Let's close that scene and let's go to another very important scene in your lifetime when something has impacted your life. I met a girl. Mm. Tell me more. She has ruffled dress. She smiles. She likes me. I like her. I've only seen her in the store. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get to know her better, I think. So what do you do? I talk to her. I think a lot of it will depend upon her parents. I think she is... She is 
for lack of a better word, part of the of an aristocratic family. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anything will happen, but it's nice to make the connection. Mm -hmm. Can you see her eyes? Yes. The eyes are the window to the soul. Do you recognize those eyes in the life of David? Those are the eyes of... Those appear to be the eyes of my mother. Mm -hmm. Which... May I analyze? May I comment? Mm. No? No, keep going. I I feel a comfort there. Mm -hmm. Those eyes are comforting. Those eyes are loving. I could be happy. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm not happy. I could be happier. Yeah. But I don't think it's up to me. So this is a decision that is going to have to be made with me accepting the result. I don't know that it's going anywhere other than a, a friendship. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else from that scene that's important? I'm still in the store and I have a I'm growing in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. So my stature is, stature is building somewhat in the town. How does that make you feel? Like I'm accomplishing. Mm -hmm. Like I have self-worth. The orphanage did a... It took care of you and it protected you, but it didn't do much in terms of feelings of self-worth or self-confidence. You had to find ways to generate that yourself. The store is helping me to do that. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything else important that happens there in this time of your life? Just wait and see. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close that scene and let's go forward now to the next important event, what happens? I see the girl who I liked getting on a train. She's going to be getting married. I'm glad she's happy. We're still friends. But she's getting on a train. I'm wondering whether I will see her very much anymore. It's sort of a sad day, but at the same time I'm happy for her. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel that heaviness? Oh, I'm just... That sadness, where do you feel it? You mean in my heart? Mm -hmm. In my heart and my brain. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, it's part of life. It's not that I didn't expect it. I was just hoping. Mm -hmm. If I had, if I had expected it, it would be totally different. But I, I knew what the realities were. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad to have known her and to have had that friendship. Very good. So now let's leave that scene. You're much older now. What's happening now in your life that's impacting you? I'm an old man. But I have... I have children around me. Who are these children? I think they're my grandchildren. I'm in a rocking chair and 
they're playing on the floor around me and I'm happy. I have a family. I I feel like I have contributed to the well-being and protection and safety of others, albeit a small group. But I am satisfied. It's been a good life. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now let's close that scene and go to the last day of your lifetime in that life and tell me what's happening. I'm in a bed, a post bed, mm -hmm. lots of coverlets and stuff around me, but I'm not doing well. I feel terrible. What's wrong with you? I'm sick. I think I have heart problems. Mm -hmm. I'm breathing heavily. Are you by yourself or are there others around you? There's others in the other room. Currently I'm by myself. They come in and check up on me periodically. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of my Maybe one of my granddaughters is the one who's tending me. She seems to be in her late teens. But I'm wheezing and she's concerned. Very good. So let's now take your last breath in that lifetime. Take that last breath and allow yourself to transition out of that body, leaving that body behind. And every life has a purpose and a lesson. What was the purpose of that lifetime? I think the purpose of that lifetime was to try to bring joy to the lives of others. No matter how few, but to help contribute to the quality of life of those who are around me. to be positive, optimistic, hopeful, and to try to instill those feelings in others. Do you think you accomplished it in that lifetime? I did with those who I was around. Mm -hmm. I wish I had the opportunity to be around more in some sort of capacity. Mm -hmm. Did you learn any lessons from that? Well, the lessons appear to be that despite the obstacles that are put in your way, you can always accomplish your goals even to, I mean, even if it's to a limited degree. But there may be obstacles that inhibit you to make it so that going beyond that is very difficult. Opportunities need to arise and if they don't arise, they don't arise. Mm -hmm. But basically it's work with what you have and make the best of what you have and be happy mm -hmm. with what you have. And you did that in that life? Yes. So now transition out of that body and tell me what happens after you leave that body. I'm back at the table mm -hmm. with my friends who are laughing and joking and clowning. What do they say to you? They're kind of saying like, uh, I didn't do too good. Why is that? Um, they're saying that it wasn't really any fault of my own, it was the circumstance. But they knew it was be, would be a difficult circumstance when I went. And they were sorry they had to put me through that. What was the reason why they had to put you through that? They're not telling me that the reason, but, but, but I know I'm responding telling them it's okay. I mean, I managed. There's, I did what I 
was expected to do. There's no reason to make fun of me or to make light. I accomplished my purpose. It was just on a smaller scale than you all had envisioned. Don't give me any grief. So what's the next step? What are they telling you now? They're telling me I get to be part of the council to decide where one of them go, and I can't wait. Mm. <laughs> so let's see what happens then. Allow yourself to be in that position. All right. Well, I've been there for a little time because the person who is supposed to be transitioned off is just now arriving, and I recognize him. He was one of the four who, mm -hmm. but now he's coming back and he's getting to go again, and he's a friend. Which one was, who was he? Was there a, was his name Alonzo? Mm -hmm. what was it? it was Alonzo, that's Alonzo. Mm -hmm. But he gets to go out again and we get to decide where he goes. And I don't know about, I don't know about the life that he's coming from because I wasn't here when he was sent. I wasn't sure what his purpose was, but we can talk about what he needs to do now. Mm -hmm. And what is your res responsibility on this council? I think it's to be one of the voices. It's not to be a decision maker per se, but it's to add my, my opinion to the group so the decision maker has more information to deal with rather than just his own mind. Mm -hmm. And what is the purpose of going to this council between lives? I feel like the purpose is to give the individual the knowledge that he has supported, mm -hmm. that he has friends, that he's not forgotten, that people do care about what happens, that he's not in this alone that he will receive whatever guidance and assistance that he needs or if he feels like somehow he misses out in the life that he's going about to serve, he will certainly get that support and camaraderie when he comes back. I mean, it's all a cycle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what we do. It's, it's part of the routine. And the thing that I'm happy about is that the group of people who I have associated with are enthusiastic about it. They enjoy it. They realize that this is what they need to do, that it's not only for our own good, but we are being sent for a reason to see what, how we can benefit those who are around us. Mm. Is that the reason why you incarnate? That's the reason why the people in my group have been incarnating. Okay. Does your group have the same ideas? Do you have something similar? Similar to? To the ideas of why you're incarnating. Are you there for the same purpose? I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is to uplift, to let people understand what their true potential might be to have them aspire to that potential, to live to their highest degree possible, to enlighten those who are around them, to bring joy, to do good, to bring happiness, to overcome the, the roadblocks, the bumps, the, the difficulties that they encounter and realize that your attitude, your commitment can overcome anything, that you can be happy and that those around you can be happy. 
if you take the right frame of mind in desiring to help and serve others. Wonderful. So now I'd like for you to jump to the scene where you are deciding or have someone has decided for you to come to the incarnation of David. Okay. All right. Let's find out what the decision was made. I have been asked to. I have been asked to go down as David. Mm -hmm. I know. I know the couple had a daughter who has died. I know I know that I am to fill a gap, but that I do have a similar purpose of helping to brighten and uplift the family. Mm -hmm. What criteria was used for it to pick this family? Just the death of this daughter? Or have you known this family before? I'm not aware of having known the family before. Mm -hmm. I sort of think the purpose or the reason this family specifically was chosen because some of the past experiences I had had been pretty difficult. They wanted to give me what they considered to be a, a family that had potential that where I would be loved where I would have opportunity, where I would be able to avoid some of the hardships that I had experienced in other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. I didn't question. I, I was happy to go, as I always have been. Are there any guides that go with you in this incarnation? Michael, Michael, Gabriel, mm -hmm. one other. His name starts with an R. Rothio. Mm -hmm. Those are the three. Mm -hmm. And what is the purpose for those three to go with you in this incarnation? My impression is to guide, to help. Specific purpose, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Do you meet with them before you go? They are with me. I don't know. I don't know that there's much or any communication. Mm -hmm. They know I'm going and I know they are with me as I am going. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there anything else important to know before this incarnation? Just that I will have advantages and because of that a lot is, is, is expected. So potential is there beyond what the potential of other lifetimes perhaps have been. That... <laughs> I hoped I didn't blow it. <laughs> Very good. So now just take a deep breath in and I'd like to speak now with your Higher Self. Do I have permission to ask questions? Yes. Thank you. I know you could have shown David many different lifetimes today. Why did you show him the one of this 
Native American. Why that one? To show him that you don't have to be attached to a family. You can be happy by yourself or you can make your own connections to a community or to a tribe without having the immediate family connections and feel the same same concern and love and experience the same things a smaller family feels. Mm -hmm. He did very well in that family. He did. Mm -hmm. Why did you show him the one of the orphan who grows up to be successful? To show him the contrast. What you experience when you don't have that mm -hmm. loving family. You have the large community, but the community is what you make it. So you have to contribute to making it into something more. His community was the same size or larger, but the first community he felt it, the second he did not. So he created his own smaller one of his immediate family and learned happiness through those associations. I'd like to ask the higher self now, is there anything that I could have asked that I didn't that you would like to tell David now? David is on the right path. Mm -hmm. Very good. Have confidence. Mm -hmm. Persevere. All will be well. Very good. Are we complete today? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Oh, it was a pleasure. How do you feel? Light. <laughs> <laughs> light as a feather? Light, mm -hmm. yes. Very light. Wonderful. So what do you remember about this? Uh, pretty much everything, I yeah. think. Yes. You're very, very detailed, you see. Were you able to see or just know? Um, I had a fear of not being articulate enough. Uh-huh. You were great. So I made a point of trying to vocalize. Mm-hmm. So you told us, told me at the beginning, you didn't think you were visual. So how were you imagining all of this? How was it coming through? Um, instinct mm -hmm. and visual. I mean, okay. once 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 you start verbalizing, the visual mm -hmm. kicks in. That's right. Yeah, good. So, how long do you feel you're on this journey? Uh, I know it was more than an hour. Well, how did it feel? Um, hour 20. We're at, at hour 50. Wow. <laughs> okay. A lot longer than you thought. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So did you get all your answers? I did. Mm -hmm. And I then did. some? And then some. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what do you think about this? Is this something you want to share or you want to keep private? Um, I don't mind sharing most of it. Mm -hmm. We could take some out. I want to think about mm -hmm. a couple of places. Yeah. But I, the bulk of it, I don't mind sharing at all. What was really interesting to me was the life between lives. Really? Yeah. Okay. How you kept going back with your friends. That was interesting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then one time... I guess, I guess there has to be some sort of some sort of anchor, right? Yeah, and then you you go back and you say, okay, this time I'm on the council and you guys go, you go back. That was, that was wild. That's right. Well, there's a lot to be said for friends, right? That's right. So here we are, after this wonderful session. I thought it was really good. I thought the part with the Indian was good. I thought the part with the, the orphan getting... Um, successful was good and I love the part between lives I thought that was great good so how do you feel um, 
I feel good. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back and watching and listening yes. and thinking about it. Yes. Um, I'm happy I did this. And uh, I got my answers. I, I am interested in the... Um, and how young I am when it comes to being a spirit mm -hmm. or a soul. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a kid, aren't I? <laughs> You're pretty young. It's so nice. how does your body feel? We had some, some, uh, some spiritual healing there. How does your eye feel? Well, my eye's open. Yeah? Um, I mean, right now if I, it's fine. Isn't that wild? It is wild. Um, we'll see how long it lasts. Let's well, it lasts. you you have to have faith. I that's mean, the exact, whole thing is about having faith. That's exactly, okay, that's exactly right. You don't and, want I do, and I do feel lighter. Isn't that something? I mean, it's, I mean, it's that's just the lightness of being, right? Right. <laughs> so tell everybody where you where you're from. North Carolina. So you drove all all the way down here. I drove down here, um, spent the night. Uh, my whole family's come. I mean, my brother and my father have had similar sessions. And you'll mm. be seeing those sessions too. And it's a um, worthwhile experience. Yes. So, um, do you recommend this to other people? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, one of the questions I always ask is, how did it feel being in hypnosis? Um, like I was relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, I was in control. Yes. Um, intellectually, I was wondering where the answers were going to come from mm -hmm. but then they just came and I didn't have to worry about it. Now there was one point where you were judging. That's correct. And tell me what happened there. Well I'm looking at my my grandmother's <laughs> through her eyes and I'm a baby I mean I'm looking in my grandmother's face and I'm a baby and it's during when my father's alive yeah, so with her own family. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, you're trying to figure it out. That's exactly right. So now do you do you realize why well, you shouldn't figure it out? It's it's just you weren't even your higher self will tell you the answers later. Well. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you would like a session with me, just go to my website, albawyman.com, and you can get information there. Uh, I travel all over the place, so if um, I book way, way out and out, months and months and months away. So I do travel. I do put out a newsletter telling you where I'm going to next. And if you're in a city near there, sign up really fast because those sessions go instantly. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. It's worthwhile. Bye. Bye. Get that head. Let's get the head. That's the <laughs> favorite part.